Hey there, this is Kamal and in this video, we'll be looking at how we can host an Angular application for free as quickly as possible. So let's get this started. All right, so previously we used to use a service called as Heroku, but now Heroku has removed their free version. That is a free plan and they've only given out the paid version. So if you want to host your websites through Heroku, you'll have to buy the premium version or the premium plan and continue with that. But many of the developers out there, they just want to use a simple website to test out their Angular applications in dummy servers. For that particular purpose, there are multiple services out there which you can use. Services like Cyclic or Railway or many other options. But in this particular video, we'll be using a service called as Render. So a disclaimer, this video is not sponsored by Render. I'm just using that service and I found that really useful for my Angular application. So I'm just sharing that with you so that you can use that for your own deployments and testing out your websites as well. So let's quickly jump in and see how we can host a website. So let's open the browser and let's go to render. So it's going to be render.com. So let's open the first link. If you haven't signed up to this particular website as of yet, please do so. And once you have that, you can go to the dashboard. So let me zoom in a bit. Right. So as you can see here, there are multiple services that they offer right now. But the two main services that we are going to concentrate on are static sites and web services, the first two sections, right? So basically the static side is something that you're going to use for hosting applications wherein you don't have any interaction with the backend services like let's say MongoDB or SQL or any of those interactions. For any of the services which have those interactions like let's say a main stack application or a main stack application, in those scenarios you're going to use the web services. Okay, so that's going to be the different topic. So in this particular video, we'll only work on the static side and that is because our application is just a simple Angular application. It doesn't have any backend linking. So for that, you can use your existing Angular applications that we have. But for this particular video, I've created a separate Angular application for testing purposes. And that is available in our GitHub list of repositories. So if I go to my GitHub account and let's go to packet code, and here, as you can see, there is one repository called as Angular Deploy App. If you want, you can use your Angular blog as well, which we had done a video previously on. So there's a blog application that was created using Angular and JSON server. You can host that as well if you want. But for this particular video, we'll be using the Angular Deploy app since I'll be using that for testing other services as well. So let's open that. And as you can see here, there is nothing much on this. This is just a simple Angular application, which has only one page. That is the home page. All right, so let's go back to the render dashboard. Okay, now let's click on new site. And in here, as you can see, there are two ways in which you can link your repository. One is to directly connect to your GitHub account. If you have that application's code with you, that is the repository with you, you can connect to GitHub and deploy your own applications. Even if it's private also, that will be available here. But for this particular video, we'll be using the public one, which I have hosted. So let's copy the link for this particular repository. Let's click on here. Let's go back and in the public git repository section, let's paste that and let's click on enter. Okay, so now that's going to give you some options that you have to enter in. The first one is going to be the name. I'm going to give it as Angular Deploy App. You can give it in camel case or you can give it through hyphens, anything you want. It's, it's not going to affect anything. Now the second one is going to be the branch in which your code is present. So in our case, main is the branch that we're going to use. If you go back to the repository as well, under the branches, there is only one branch called as main. So that is what we will be using here. But if you have a specific branch, you can input that if you want. Okay, so the third one is going to be the root directory. So you don't need to worry about this as of now. It is an optional parameter and we don't need that as well. So let's skip that. In most of the Angular applications, you don't need that. But let's say you have a special scenario wherein your Angular application is not present at the root of your repository. In this case, let's say our application, which is present here, is present inside of another folder called as frontend. And inside that trend end, if the Angular application is present, then you have to give the root directory. Okay, only in those scenarios, this comes into picture. But for our scenario, there is nothing like that. Our Angular code itself is present at the utmost directory, that is the root level, right? Okay, now let's go to the next option. That's going to be the build command. So the command which you're going to use to actually build your assets and compile and create that final version is the command that you have to input here. So for any application which is using npm, the first command is always going to be npm install. So for this case as well, let's type in npm install, give a colon, give a space, and now you have to give the command which you're going to use to build your application. So if you go back to the application and in the package.json, if you see here under the scripts, we have a few things called as start, build, watch, and test, right? So the start script is going to serve your script, but for our purposes, we are going to use the build command. 
so it's going to be ng build so you can either use ng build directly or you can use npm run and run the script called as build in this case let's use npm okay just to maintain consistency so i'll type in npm run space the script name in this case it's going to be build so it's going to run the build script if you have something like let's say a front end and a back end separation then you can specify what you want to run inside your build script as well like inside the package.json here you can say cd slash front end give a space and write the remaining commands okay that is what you want to do here but in our case it's going to be a simple angular application right so after that you have the published directory so this is where your uh, build files will be present so in this case in angular applications it's going to be dist give a slash and then it's going to be your application name and for this particular repository it's going to be angular hyphen deploy hyphen app so i'll just type that in okay so that is where our build files are going to be stored into if you want what you can do is that you can download this repository into your local system and build it up using those commands as well and see where the files are being stored generally this is where it's going to be stored so that is what i'm going to input here and i'll click on create static site All right, so as you can see here, we have a message saying your site is live and we also have a tag saying live. That means the build process has completed and now our application is live. So if you go to the top and if you observe here, there's a URL. So if I click on that, let's open that. So this was the home page that we had created in the Angular Deploy app repository. So this is what is being hosted. And as you can see, this is the URL that was created by render.com. So we are not using our own domain or anything like that. This is given by render. All right, so in this way, you can deploy any Angular application that you want for testing out in a dummy server and it's gonna work just fine. Apart from that, if you go to the settings here, you can see that you also have access to all the settings that you had previously given during the initialization. Apart from that, you also have something called as auto deploy. So whenever you make any change in your code and your SPRs and you merge them, or if you directly make the change directly to the main branch as well, in any of those scenarios, whenever there's an update in the main branch, automatically the code will be deployed onto the server directly through the main branch. And that is driven through this key called as auto deploy. So if you set it to yes, which is there by default, automatically it's gonna deploy. If not, you can remove that as well. So apart from this, you also have the metrics and you also have the PRs and all the remaining things that you want, you can check through here. Now let's go back to the dashboard and as you can see here, we have the Angular deploy app repository hosted here and it is saying as deploy succeeded. So that is how you host your friend and applications like Angular or React or Vue.js directly for free here through render. So now you can use this and host and test your own applications as well. So that's it for this video guys. I hope you have liked what you've seen till now. If you did then please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe as well. Thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.